Daytona in the 1950s. Orlando was just a hop and a skip from Daytona Beach, so you know where most of the GIs from Orlando Air Force Base spent the weekend. In those days, you could sleep on the beach, but that was back in the pioneer days of the 1950s. All the lifeguards, or most of the lifeguards and Daytona police, knew us because we were up there every weekend, and some of them became good friends. When we first started going to Daytona, we would swim in the ocean night and day. One day, one of the lifeguards asked why we swam in the ocean. He went on to say the only way he would swim in the ocean is for training or to rescue someone. That revelation ended my swimming in the ocean. We had a group that was always together, and we became fixtures at the beach. We had some singers in our group, and sometimes we would entertain for the folks. We had a routine we did to attract a crowd around some of the boardwalk shops. Some of the shop owners started asking us to do our thing to create a crowd. We did not do anything fancy, but we were unique to say the least. I have said before, if I had it all to do over, I would keep a journal. You can imagine how many people we met from all over the place vacationing at Daytona Beach. We would make new friends each weekend. People would come to the beach, park the automobile, and get involved in something and forget about the car and the tide coming in. I don't know how many vehicles we rescued from the ocean, but it was a bunch. We were eventually asked to stop doing this because the tow truck operators started to complain. I was on the beach at Daytona when they ran the first race at the new Speedway. Before that, the race was partly on the beach and roadway. The Thunderbirds performed that day, and they were flying the F-100. I never did see a race at Daytona, and I cannot tell you why. For some reason, I never did go to the races. Most of that strip of road by the beach where they used to race is now motel after motel, but back then it was deserted. Some of my friends in the group were photographers and were always taking photographs. I don't believe I ever took more than one or two photos while I was at Daytona. One of those in our group and an avid photographer passed away in 2002. I contacted his son asking if he had some of his dad's photos, hoping I could get my hands on some. Although he promised to contact his sister, who he thought had some of the photographs, I never heard back from him and I am sure they are lost forever. When you are young, you never think about saving photos and keeping records, or some of us don't. I am 75 when I wrote this. I'm now 76, and I am sure some of the other girlfriends are now 70 or 80 years old. More than a few are probably deceased, but I lost track of everybody from back then, so I have no way of knowing who is still alive. Another difficult thing in finding some of my old friends is they are not online. I am so glad this was before the drug culture. I never did use alcohol, but some in our group did. I cannot remember any of them being obnoxious or drunk. My vice was cigarettes, and I smoked a bunch of them back then. All in all, it was a fantastic time to be young 
and lucky enough to be in a place where you were surrounded by beautiful people, both strangers and friends. Thank you, United States Air Force, for the ride.